In this video we're going to look at saving regular amounts of money each month. Uh, and we can also use the, the same principle for, you know, twice a year and things like that. But if we just look at saving each uh, regular amounts monthly, we're going to have a regular deposits formula. And um, we'll do these examples one and two here. And uh, um, we'll also answer these quest other questions for example one. So the point is that we've just covered what happens when you take a big lump sum, a big amount of money, and you just put it in the bank and sit back and watch it collect interest. So that was the you know compound interest formula for one thing. You put in your principal and then it, the interest compounds and then after a certain amount of years, how much money do we have? Well, um, of course, a more common thing would probably be to save a certain amount every month, like put a hundred bucks in in your account in a savings account every month, and see how that interest increases. Okay, so that's the first example we're going to do. Suppose you deposit a hundred dollars into your savings account at the end of every month at an APR of twelve percent compounded monthly. What will be in the what will be what will the balance be after one, two, three, or four months? and for us make a table so the table we're going to make is looks like this we're going to start with uh, the month and of course it'll be we'll look at what happens at the end of each month okay so just try and carefully as neat as possible do that then we'll look at the interest uh, gained and give ourselves some space for that to do some calculations and then we'll look. We'll, we'll we'll do a column that shows the amount we deposit into the account, and of course, at the end, we'll calculate the balance at the end of every month. So, make a table, something like that. Just make sure you give yourself some space for the interest. But here's how it's going to go, and and you can at the end of month one, okay. Uh, and and the idea here is that you open the savings account but you don't put anything in just to begin with you open the savings account and then you go work go back to work and at the end of the first month you're going to deposit a hundred dollars You got that and um, of course you're not going to get any interest you know at the end of month one because you just put this in at the end of month one okay so this is putting a um, hundred dollars in at the end of the first month okay and the balance is now $100. So um, that's just part of the question, and th this is part of the formula. We're just imagining that all of our savings accounts that we're going to look at in this section, you know, they start with nothing, and then at the end of the month, that's when you put in your first deposit. That just makes our, the formula we, we come up with will we'll work for that, basically. So in any case, at the end of month two, what happens? How much interest do you get at the end of month two? By all means, press pause and hash it out and try it and see if what you come up with. And I suggest that you read this line, APR of 12% compounded monthly, and try to remember what that means. The interest rate is the annual we've got an annual percentage rate of 12% that is compounded monthly so what we need to actually come up with is the special monthly interest rate okay which is in fact 12% divided by 12 which is in fact 1% the interest rate each month is 1%. Okay, so that's the monthly interest rate. So that's important. At the end of the second month, we do get interest because the $100 was in there. What the interest we get is 1% 1 of 100, which equals what? Well, that's the same thing as 0 0.01 times 100, right? which is one dollar one right and also at the end of month two we've been working and from our uh, wage we're putting in a hundred dollars as well okay so what's the final balance at the end of month two now any idea well isn't it the hundred dollars that was already in there 
plus what? Plus the hundred dollars we're putting in for month two. Anything else to contribute to the balance at the end of month two? The interest of one dollar. Okay, does that make sense? Hundred dollars already in there. Hundred dollars deposited at the end of month two, and another do uh, one dollar interest. So that makes two hundred and one dollars, doesn't it? So at the end of month three, what happens? You earn some interest first of all. You earn some interest in what's already in the account. Okay. And what's in the account? It's two hundred one dollars, right? So don't we get one percent? the monthly interest rate of 201 what does that make well that of course is 0 0.01 times 201 one percent is that decimal and of means multiply so that is 2.01 dollars right and do we deposit something at the end of month three we deposit one hundred dollars, right? And what's our final balance? Can you write it down? What's the final balance? It's the two hundred one that was already there, right? Plus what? Plus the hundred that we deposit, plus what else? Plus the interest of two dollars and one cent, right? So, what's the if you add that all together, don't we get three hundred dollars and uh, three and how many cent? One cent, right? So please press pause and do line four. So at the end of month four, what is the balance in the account? Pre please press pause and do it yourself. Then I'll do it quickly. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. Please press pause and try it if you haven't already. So you've got to put in the, you've got to figure out the interest. It's 1% of $303.01. Which gives you 0 0.01 times 303 .01, which gives what? About $3.03. Okay. I guess I've rounded there a bit, haven't I? That's okay because we want our answer into the nearest cent and we'll, we'll be adding. So then we deposit $100 at the end of month four. And so our total amount at month four is the 303.01 that was already in there plus the deposit of 100 plus some interest. What interest did we get at the end of month four? $3.03, three right? And if I add this up together, I get $406 four cent right does that make sense so a um, couple of things to notice about this is that um, you're depositing a certain amount every month and look at your interest it's really increasing each period because you're earning interest on top of the new balance and the new balance keeps increasing by a good amount each month right so the interest obviously increases by a good amount so, um, how are we going? How are we going to answer this question? What will be in the savings account after one year? My gosh, that sounds like a after one year. That sounds like a, a long calculation, doesn't it? We would have to continue this table and go all the way down to twelve months, wouldn't we? We need the end of month twelve. That would be one year. See that? And that would be a lot of work, right? So I'm just trying to the reason there's a couple of reasons for this table. Number one, understand what, what's going on. Number two, try to understand like the complexity of the calculations. So you keep having to calculate a percentage on top of the new balance. And um, so what we're going to use is a formula called the regular deposits formula. Okay, and we're going to write that down really carefully so that you don't make a mess of it. Okay, so, and I'll try, and you probably do it neater than me, but I'll try. So balance, or the final balance, equals the deposit amount times 
1 plus r, the interest rate, monthly interest rate, to the power of t, where t is the number of deposits altogether, minus the number 1 all over r, the monthly interest rate. Okay, So write that down, and if you wrote it uh, not neatly, write it down again. But let's get this right. We're going to get you to write it down so you see it in your brain. And um, the, the two letters to understand here, I hope you understand what balance and deposit mean. I mean, deposit here is the $100, and the balance is the amount after how many deposits you've done. Like, this balance is $406.04 uh, after, t after uh, four uh, months. So, um, in, in, so in this, in, in the case we just did here, the T is a number of deposits, and T would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, right? And R, in our case, is 1%, okay? So in this first example, R is the monthly interest rate, that's 1%, and T is the number of deposits, or the end of the month, you know, how many deposits you've made. Because look, after the end of month 4, we've made 4 deposits, right? So um, that's very important to note that R is the monthly interest rate. T is the number of deposits you're going to make. Okay. Now, will you need to memorize that formula? No, you will not. I, you will get this formula on a test. You don't need to memorize it. You may need to distinguish between what type of formula I need for whatever question you're dealing with. But you will be told, you'll be given this whole thing. The regular deposits formula. The balance equals this. Okay? You'll, get, you'll be given all of this. Regular deposit formula, balance equals deposit times this thing over R, and you'll be told what R and T are. Right? Of course, it's it's from what we need to learn is how to use this formula and um, when to use it. Basically, is is the important thing. So here we go. What will be in the savings account after one year? In order to use this formula, and we're trying to figure out the balance after one year. So it's equal to the, the deposit amount. And how much are we depositing? $100 into a savings account at the end of every month, right? So the balance equals 100, first of all, times, and then we've got 1 plus R to the power of T. Now, the important thing is to figure out what R is. What's R? It's the monthly interest rate. The annual percentage rate is 12%, but it's compounded monthly. So we take our 12%, we divide by 12, and we get 1%. What's that as a decimal? 0 0.01. So it's important to note that R is 0 0.01. And if R is 0 0.01, what is um, 1 plus R equal to? 1 plus R equals 1.01. Does that make sense? What is T equal to? T is the uh, number of deposits in one year, and we're making a, a deposit. You deposit a hundred dollars into your savings account at the end of every month. That's going to be twelve deposits, right? So we're going to make twelve deposits because it's one year, right? So what we have is one hundred and one or a hundred times one point zero one to the power of t and t is 12, see that? So this is 1 plus r, 1.01 .01 to the power of, you okay with that part? Then we subtract 1, then we divide by the interest rate r. What's the interest rate r? r is 0 0.01, okay? And then we calculate that. Now, if you do happen to have a calculator that will do a one line entry that would help because what you would do is type the whole thing out and um, I'll just do that 
with with this type of calculator first. So you go 100 parenthesis 1.01 .01 to the power of, and you might have a little hat sign or or some exponent symbol to the power of 12. Then I'm going to press the right arrow key on this calculator. I need to do that, and I'm going to use subtract instead of negative. Do not mix up subtract and negative, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. Okay. This sign here means negative. This sign here means subtract. We've got to use subtract. Subtract 1. Close parenthesis. So that's the top of the fraction, right? I'm just going to press enter. I'm going to get 12.682 and so on. I'm not going to round that. I'm going to leave that there. I'm just going to hit divide and it'll say answer, divide by, and then 0 0.01 and then press enter. Okay? So it's important not to round numbers while you're calculating. So we get 1268.2503, etc. But we can round at the very end. That's okay. We can round at the very end because we just need the answer to the nearest cent, right? Because we're talking about money. So it's $1,268.25. Okay? And if you were using a dinky little calculator really quickly, you would go 1.01. .01. You would use an exponent key like this one, x to the power of y. See that guy here? We click him and then to the power of 12. Then you press say equals. Okay, that gives me 1.1268 and so on. Now I'm going to subtract 1. So I'm, I'm doing order of operations. I'm, I'm following PEMDAS, right? So I'm going to subtract 1 now. So subtract 1 equals 0 0.1268. And then I'm going to multiply that by 100. Then press equals. Okay. 12.68, etc. Then I'm going to divide that by 0 0.1 equals. And I do indeed get 1268.2503, which is the same as the fancy calculator. Okay. So in any use the formula to calculate what will be in the savings account after four months. Now, we've just done that with the table, right? After four months, $406.04. 4 now we did that by hand, going step by step, each month uh, month by month, right? So what I'd like you to do is try and do this now with the formula, and by all means you can press pause and try it if you want to. But uh, I'll just put the formula up there Okay, I hope you, you can press pause and try it if you want to, you don't need to. But um, basically, it's the same thing. You're going to try and calculate the balance, okay? And the balance is going to equal the deposit amount, $100, times 1 plus r to the power of t. Now, in this case, of course, r is still 0 0.01. And of course, 1 plus r is, you know, 1.01. .01. I mean, the interest rate is the same. But something has changed in this example. And what has changed is t. It's four months. And that's going to be uh, four deposits. So t equals four deposits this time, right? So 1 plus r to the power of t, that would be 1.01 .01 to the power of four. Then subtract one then subtract 1, sorry, then divide by r, which is 0 0.01, okay? So that is what you should write down, and definitely write this down on a piece of paper, and, um, and of course you get points for taking neat notes on the video and um, in your homework. So then we calculate this, and Again, you can use a one line entry and divide by this on a calculator. I'm going to use um, this little one here. And even on your computer, you would have a calculator like this that you could find to use. But in any case, I use PEMDAS. I go into the parentheses first. And inside the parentheses, there's an exponent and there's a subtract. So if I follow the order of operations PEMDAS, I need to do my exponents first 1.01 .01 to the power of 4 equals 1.0406, etc. Then I need to subtract 1. 0 0.0406, right? Then I times by 100. 
Whoops. Yep, got to start again. Sorry, 1.01 .01 to the power of 4 equals that. Subtract 1 equals that. Times by 100 equals that. Divide by 0 0.01 equals 406.04. So approximately to the nearest cent, because we're dealing with money, what's that to the nearest cent? Four hundred six dollars and four cents, right? Which is the same thing as the table. Which way do you prefer to do it? The table or the formula? The formula is probably a little bit quicker, don't you think? Especially if we have to do lots of calculations to get to the answer. All right? So please press pause and do this one all by yourself. What will be in the savings account after 25 years? Press pause and do that one. Okay, I really hope you pressed pause and done it. I'm going to do it really fast now. Again, the monthly interest rate is 12% divided by 12 which of course is 1% which is 0 0.01 1 plus R is 1.01 .01. T is the number of deposits and that has changed now because we're talking about 25 years how many deposits in 25 years? it's not 25 because it's deposit $100 into your savings account at the end of every month my goodness the number of deposits is 25 times 12 because it's 25 years and 12 months. What does that make? 300. So you might have made a mistake on T and that's why we have these videos to give you a chance to make mistakes. And if you've done that, please press pause now and complete the question um, from here on. Okay, I hope you press pause if you need to. Now I'm going to complete the question. So the balance should equal the deposit amount times 1 plus R. Okay, deposit amount times 1 plus R, which is 1.01 .01 to the power of T, 300. That's the number of deposits in 25 years each month, right? Then subtract 1, then divide by R. 0 0.01 okay so please press pause and calculate that I'm going to do it now so if I was to use this calculator it would be 100 parenthesis 1.01 .01 to the power of 300 uh, subtract 1 so once again watch out for subtract and negative Got to subtract 1 press enter then divide that by 0 0.01 press enter and we should get 1878846626 round that to the nearest cent what do you have one hundred eighty seven thousand eight hundred eighty four dollars 66 cent because there's a 2 after this 6 and so it rounds down okay so let's have a look at example 2 saving for a boat and you're going to need your formula so please press pause and try example 2 all by yourself if you like it's you are saving to buy a boat and you deposit $150 at the end of each month for two years at an APR of 3.6% compounded monthly. What is the future value for this savings arrangement? Please press pause, try this yourself, and then uh, watch the video, check your answer. I'm going to do it quickly. But the whole point about this is that you press that pause button and you make some mistakes. And it's good if, if you're going to make a mistake, now's the time. Hey, if you get it right the first time, that's great. But if you make a mistake, that's okay. You'll make a mistake in a video because then you can play the video and check your answer. So please press pause and make a mistake or two. Think about it, do your best, and then play the video and see if you happen to get it right. And if you didn't, hey, it doesn't matter because you can just fix it, right? So I um, hope you pressed pause and, and had fun and, 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 and tried it.
I'm going to do it now so that, that there's two things we need to watch out with the formula. Calculating R, the monthly interest rate, and calculating T, the number of deposits. So R is the monthly interest rate. So that's going to be taking the APR and dividing by 12 to get the monthly interest rate. So it's going to take our 3.6% and divide it by 12. And of course that 0 0.036 divided by 12 which is 0 0.003. Okay? If you got that, well done. If you didn't, that's fine. I'm sure you'll remember how to do it next time, right? So we've got R, and in this formula there's also 1 plus R. So if R equals that, what does 1 plus R equal? 1.003. Okay. Now what does T equal? T is the number of deposits. You deposit $150 at the end of each month for two years. How many deposits is that? Is it two? Is that two deposits? No, because it's at the end of every month for two years. So it's two times 12, right? 24 deposits is what we have. So R is 0 0.003. 1 plus R is... Uh, 1.003 and t is 24. Okay, with that. So we got r, you got 1 plus r, you got t. Plug them into the equation and you're good to go. So the balance, so press pause and do it from here if you haven't done it yet. Okay, I'm going to do it now. Hope you press pause. So the balance equals the deposit amount, 150, times 1 plus r. 1.003 to the power of t to the power of 24 then subtract 1 then divide by r 0 0.003 okay and again um, press pause and calculate it and check your answer okay I'm going to do it now so I'll use this calculator for fun um, 1.003 x to the power of y is what's on this one, so to the power of 24 equals that, then subtract 1 and we get this number, 0 0.0745, that's this number, and then we times by 150, times by 150 equals that, then we divide by this, divide by 0 0.003 equals this, 376 Seven, sorry, two six three seven two six point nine seven five nine, etc. Round that to the nearest cent, and what do you have? Three thousand seven hundred twenty-six dollars and ninety-eight cent. Right.